Thank you for joining us here this week on windservetoots.com. We, uh, if you remember in our last video, we uh, installed remote desktop services, uh, formerly known as Windows Terminal Services, and we did most of the boring stuff last video. We did the install, and we uh, configured where the uh, licensing manager was and things like that. Um, so basically, this week, it's the licensing manager down here. Um, so basically, this week, we're going to be covering some of the more fun options and the more exciting uh, new tools that Microsoft has given us, uh, specifically with Windows 2008 R2. We're going to be covering um, some of the improvements and enhancements that they've made, and specifically going into something called Remote App. Now, if you were familiar um, with Citrix products, Citrix has had some stuff like this around for a while, but now, instead of having to buy a terminal server license and a Citrix license, Microsoft has done a really good job in integrating this into Windows 2008 R2 architecture and Windows 7 client. So, as you can see, we've got our, uh, you know, server manager open we've got our snap-ins here and we've got our remote app manager tab under the remote desktop services okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this remote and manager and you see that we have a little warning here that the remote app program li list is empty and we don't have any programs that are actually installed to share by default I want you to sh I want to show you something something is a really neat option so by default in our install last time it installed for us a web interface where users could go in and log on and just like we're gonna use here so it can log on and look we don't have any remote app programs right now if we were to go over we could type in the name of a server here and we could log on to that server so for example if we just wanted to type uh, W2K8R2 test, and as you can see, we are prompted and we can connect and we'll be asked for our credentials for this server, this one over here. And if I were to log on with an administrator account, it would log me on. And as you can see, the screen closes out over here. So that is one of the, you know, one of the ways that people are very used to working with remote desktop. So let me just log back in over here on the server. But many people don't know about this remote app programs portion. It really could be quite wonderful. So instead of installing Microsoft Office, let's say, on 100 client systems, we're just going to right click in here and do add remote app programs presented with a very simple little wizard and I have gone ahead and pre-installed Microsoft Office on this server and if you notice um, if you listen to my uh, app locker video I mentioned about the Foxit reader I've installed the Foxit reader on here and I'll tell you actually why I did that so now if I click next and finish and we come back over here and we're gonna refresh this page and look at what we have. Now the reason actually why I added the Foxit reader is because of the fact that you have to have an enterprise license for Microsoft Office. Um, nothing that will actually um, require a certificate or a, a license key to go out and authenticate. So what you'll see here, in case you run into this in your testing environment, you're actually going to see that Microsoft Word will pop up but then we're going to get an error. This feature is not available. For more information, contact your systems administrator. And that's just because I'm using the, the good old fashioned uh, single install version of Microsoft Office. But, however, when we open the Foxit Reader, we're going to connect to that. And it will allow us to connect straight away to it. So, pretty interesting. <clears throat> One of the things that you may have noticed, though, is when we added these applications here and you could see it was very very easy we simply right clicked and we did this add remove program options here so very very simple to add and um, take away if you wanted to remove if you wanted to remove these programs you could simply highlight them and collect select remove so I want to show you one more time in case you didn't notice it so we're going to continue to this website here 
and we are going to log in under as Mr. A. Rome and this password here. And so watch as I launch this application. We're going to connect. And it prompts me for my password again. Well, that's a little bit annoying. So this was something that was kind of a, a downfall of uh, even up until Windows 2008. You kind of had to uh, re-enter your credentials if you wanted to just do a single sign-on. So with Windows 2008 R2, there is a way that we could get around that. And it involves the use of certificates. So I'm going to close this out here. Now if you notice here, Digital Signature Settings, right? We're going to select this Change option. And if you recall, in the install video, we created a self-signed certificate for our web server. So under, and let me just show you where it is, under the Remote Desktop Services, Remote App Manager, the Digital Certificate Settings, or Digital Signature Settings, I'm sorry, we're going to click Change. And then we're going to sign with the digital certificate. And what we're going to do is we are going to select that digital signature that was created. And you can see that it's good to uh, October 23rd, 2021. And we'll select OK and hit Apply. Hit OK. So now we have this certificate that we have available on our machine. Now this doesn't really help us unless we can get uh, the certificate over to this workstation. So if for any of you that know about certificates, you have to have a matching certificate. And as you can see, I've actually already exported them out onto my desktop. But in case you don't know how to export a certificate, go into our Run box and hit MMC. And that stands for Microsoft Management Console. And if you come up here and you hit Add Remove Snap-in, there is Certificates. And we can add this. And we're going to select the computer account and the local computer. And we're going to hit OK. Now, under Certificates, let me just move this over a touch. We're going to go into personal certificates. And you can see here that we are presented with the same two certificates that we saw over in this option here. As you see right here. So we're just going to cancel out of there. But so you could see that we're using the same certificate. Now this is important. You need to use the same certificate that you use to sign your remote apps to, ex um, to export. So if we simply right click all tasks and export and we just go through this wizard and we do not want to export the private key private keys stay on the server they should be guarded heavily and we just go through the export process it'll ask us the file name and we'll just do test cert 2 just so we have a different name the public key in this certificate will be the same anyway but it's not really a big deal and you would click finish we'll just hit cancel because we already have a certificate out there and now I've moved this certificate over to my workstation. So what I want to do is in my Internet Explorer, I want to go through and hit Internet Options. I want to hit Content, and I want to hit Certificates. Okay. And what we're going to do is under Trusted Publishers, we're going to... Oh, that's Untrusted Publishers. You don't want that. Under Trusted Publishers, we're going to hit Import. And we're going to go and we're going to find that file right here. And hit Next. We're going to hit Finish. The import was successful. So close this out. Close this out here. And I don't actually know if we're going to need to restart the browser, but we will just for safekeeping. Let's open this up. And it's still not a VeriSign certificate or something like that but if you were to actually use something from VeriSign this whole process would be much smoother but I'm not gonna spend that chunk of money on the video so we're gonna log in and notice this public or private computer the difference between these two is the rate with which the cookies and some of the information will decay on the system um, most of the time if you have an environment and your users are on their own computer you can select private it's okay we'll just use public for this demonstration just gonna log in 
Now, let's go to this Foxit Reader application, which we had to provide credentials for two times previously. And look, now you notice already that this box is a little bit different. Okay, It's giving us a warning. Make sure you trust the publisher before you run the program. The publisher, this is the certificate person that we were getting our certificate from, our server. So we're going to Maybe it'll even show us the details. Yep, we can see here. And we're going to connect. So look, this is the single sign-on portion. So if we were to have multiple applications that we wanted to launch out of here, as long as those applications were signed back over here with a certificate that is then trusted by the browser, uh, we won't have to authenticate several times. And again, a certificate like VeriSign or Thought would be the best to use in this situation, but it's okay if you're in an internal network. You can actually push out those certificates through um, group policy. So that's wonderful. We have this website, so now we don't have to have software installed on our local client's machine. But it is still kind of a hassle for the clients to have to go on, log into this web page every time. Let's say they want to use Microsoft Office or Picture Manager or Foxit Reader or something like that. So how can we get around that? Well, that's really where the really cool part comes in um, for this technology. So let's say for the purposes of this video, we want to... Um, look at these options right here so if you say create a Windows installer package so if you select this option and do next and it it actually will leave us um, with some default options and as you can see it has certificate signing the validity date the RD gateway set the RD gateway settings the ports we can leave those and actually, okay, let's do that. And we can put these in the remote programs menu. So just remember this, remote programs. We're going to take over client extensions, associate client extensions for this program with the remote app, and finish. So now what you can see is I have a Foxit Reader MSI package right here and you can see it's my second one and if I do a properties it's not too large so this is something that we can comfortably push out I'll just copy this over Active Directory so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in a share folder that we have on the network and we're gonna move this right over share and we're gonna move this right over to our client and we'll just pull this down and Foxit reader okay and do I actually have a PDF document here it'd be a little hard to see what we're doing without a PDF document it's okay I'll pull one down so now what we're going to do is we can simply install this package like any other Microsoft installable package. And let me actually close out of here just to prove this to you. Go here and let's sign out here. Completely close out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to launch this installer of the Foxit Reader. And if it takes too long, I'll cut the video and put a nice PDF doc somewhere that we can read. Okay, here it's asking us if we want to allow this publisher. You can even look at the details, nothing really too crazy here, just the name of what we have. And we're going to install this. And now look, we actually have the Foxit Reader application on our desktop and let me get a PDF doc for everybody to see. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have a PDF document here. I'll right click it so you can view the properties. And so you can see it's uh, passing the hash. It's actually, I'll just open it up. And you can see it's going to ask us for our password. We'll just do so one time. And it will actually just open up this document. It's actually a very good document if you're interested in security. Um, so now, the neat thing, if you were to have multiple programs, let's say we have another PDF doc or our Microsoft Word or something like that, if you open the program again, it will save the terminal server session. So your users, if you were to have multiple applications that they needed to use, they would only be prompted to log in once. And if you wanted to find these programs, again, remember the remote programs off um, folder that we exported them to? Here we see the Foxit Reader. So I hope this tutorial has been very beneficial for you. One thing that we do need to address, if it was the whole point and purpose um, of the RDS um, server, was so we didn't have to come and install applications onto our local desktops, well, how are we going to push out this very small, it's only not even 700K um, application to our users without having to go and actually install it on every single workstation? Well, the final video for this tutorial will be on pushing out applications. In this case, we're going to use these MSI files to our workstations through Active Directory. So now this is really great. We have all of our applications located and being able to be managed from one central location. And th then we will be able to push out all these very small MSI files to our clients in our environment through Active Directory. So everything can be managed very effectively from one central location. Again, re Windows really is an amazing infrastructure if you use all the tools that Microsoft gives you. So um, again, thank you for following us this week here on windservetoots.com. Do check out the next video. It will be up shortly. And the uh, MSI files that we will be installing you can install much more than just these RDS um, MSI files that we created. You can install pretty much um, most any MSI file nowadays through Active Directory. So it will be a really great final tutorial in this three-part series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, please do check out uh, the winservetoots.com website, and please check out our sponsors. Um, and check us out next time on winservetoots.com.